Okay, so now I'm going to talk about Capricorn and New Orleans. Okay, so this is a part of the series that I did on the zodiac and the environments and how each sign uh, relates to a different space and environment. So you can watch that uh, playlist on this channel if you scroll down or if you search for it. Um, and I already made one video about Cancer and Charleston because Charleston happens to just correlate with all the cancer archetypes and all the cancer symbolism. And when you do this, you kind of have to be able to mix a little bit of like the objective things with just some of like the archetypal energy or, or whatever of the city or the region. And you have to understand that you can't really be like technical or loose or splitting hairs. It's kind of like how archetypes work. They're not really like able to be completely defined in just one sentence, but they're just a right brain thing. They're sort of like a loose understanding. So with that said, I've always had this theory that in the United States being so big that it would have all the different zodiac signs within it. And really the whole planet is like that, then also within a nation. So even within like India is also a really big place. So if you're watching this in India, then different parts of India, you know, the deserts in India will relate to Scorpio. Um, the big cities will relate to Gemini, like Delhi, you know, um, or then the little villages will relate to Taurus. Swampy areas of India relate to Capricorn, you know? Okay, so that's just, uh, just a little bit on that. All right, so I went to New Orleans as my, just uh, a month ago for a wedding. I've been there once before, and I had this insight the first time I went, very, very strong in my mind. But I wanted to wait and go back again when Saturn was in Capricorn because I knew I was going to be going to this wedding to really check, really just get a little more info on it. I've, I found a lot of good things. So I've got 10 major points for my case for Capricorn being, or for New Orleans being the Capricorn sign. So to begin with, Capricorn is the cardinal sign that where the sun is the lowest in the, uh, sorry, the sun is furthest south in the horizon and the days are the shortest and the sun is lighting up the southern hemisphere of the world. So Capricorn strongly relates to the south and the southern direction. Um, then all earth signs relate to the south already. So Capricorn is like two points for being southern and the southern direction. So that's my first two points. The cardinal quality of the sun and the, you know, the days, how they're at their darkest and only moving up, you know, so the sun is further south in Capricorn. And point number two, all earth signs are, Cap are south, southerly. Um, and also, just so you know, for learning purposes, uh, all the fire signs relate to the east, the air signs relate to the west, the water signs relate to the north, and the earth relates to the south. Okay. So point number three is a really big obvious one too. And sometimes it really is just a simple Capricorn is in Western astrology. I know it's like a goat fish thing, but in Vedic, we don't have that in Vedic. It is the Makara, the sea monster or the crocodile, the gator. Okay. Makara means a crocodile particularly specifically, but it can also mean any kind of aquatic beast. So even a hippopotamus would have probably been called that in the old days. Um, and maybe even sharks, um, if we're looking at it at that level. But uh, Capricorn is the, the crocodile or the gator. And why is it the gator? I've talked about this before because I love this idea. Um, the gator, if you go to a museum, I've actually done this myself, I've gone to a museum and looked at the gator skeletons in the fossil record, and they have not changed for millions of years. The same fossil of an alligator is the exact same as the ones that were in my lake, you know, a couple years ago. and that is what Capricorn is about, is being so thorough and so strong and so solid in what you do that what you did stands the test of time and doesn't become obsolete and never really even needs to be improved upon. You know, like Saturn rules clocks, you know, a clock has existed since forever, you know, and they will continue to exist. I don't care about these digital things like you want to have a clock because a digital battery running out, that sucks, whereas a clock doesn't do that, you know. So that, that's the Capricorn thing. Um, the, 
I forgot it. But yeah, the, the gator, you know, the gator just has stood the test of time. It has existed since the time of the dinosaurs, okay? And it still exists now. So that's what Saturn is about. Saturn takes 30 years to go through the zodiac. The opposite sign is Cancer, and it takes a month to go through the zodiac. Cancer is all about the moment, the emotion, the immediate now moment. Totally the opposite energy. So my point to bring it back to the New Orleans is, well, New Orleans is where gators actually live. You know, gators can't live in most parts of America, pretty much just Florida, South, South Carolina, and um, Texas, and, you know, the southern states. And so New Orleans, we actually have alligators and big ones, and it's known for that. You, people hunt them, people eat them, this and that, you know what I mean? So it's just that simple. <laughs> the actual creature actually dwells there, you know? So New Orleans is Capricorn. Uh, point number four, Saturn rules old things and loves old things and tradition. And like what I was just saying, you know, he likes to stand the test of time and endure. So, uh, if you go to New Orleans, it's an incredibly old city. It's one of the oldest cities in all of America. And it's got a very old world feel that feels even older than it is because it was built by like all these mate you know freemasons and european french influence that you know the french building influence actually goes back to the knights templar who built like the chart cathedral and had that uh, masterful stained glass technology that we still cannot figure out to this day and that's a whole another like occult mystery there but that that whole influence and along with the secret societies and all that stuff has, is is really strong in new orleans and it's really cool and you just, just like all these Mason, Freemason buildings, all these weird like esoteric um, symbols that secret societies use. Uh, the winged caudesis of Hermes, you know, that symbolizes the, the snake going up the scepter with the, the, the rod and then the wings and still used in the medical profession. All this cool like occult uh, symbolism, the fleur de lis um, is really their symbol, symbolizes the Trinity. Um, Saturn is old and, 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 you know, appreciates these old things and carrying these old traditions and especially Capricorn because Aquarius is a sign of like the dreamer in the future and being progressive and wanting to like innovate and create new things and create aqueducts or create things that help the future of the world. Capricorn is like sort of where Saturn's looking to the past. And so again, more emphasis on the past and old things and, staying the course sort of or whatever and new orleans just has more of that feel of the old of the old world um i have my venus in capricorn i love old world things i love astrology i love these old i don't you know a lot of people in modern days in college they get taught that everything sucked in the old days that you know like everyone was just an ignorant un illiterate fool in the old days and i just don't think that's the case I'm like, okay, then who built the Great Pyramids? You know, <laughs> who built Stonehenge or the Stonehenge beneath Stonehenge that they just found, which you can read about. Um, there's actually even older structures beneath Stonehenge that they've discovered, a superhenge they're calling it. Uh, anyways, um, point number five, Saturn uh, rules death and cemeteries and mausoleums. New Orleans is really well known for these like epic cemeteries and mausoleums that people go to, you know, just like to visit when they don't have any dead people there. Every, pretty, almost everyone who goes to New Orleans visits the mausoleums. Like it's like one, one of the main things people tell you to check out, uh, which is not normal. You know what I mean? That's not really normal to, for people to say, oh, go check out the place where we bury our dead. You know what I mean? But that's Saturn. That's Capricorn. It's like we're really proud of this amazing place where we buried our dead and honored them. I got to say, I mean, it's the coolest cemeteries I've ever been to, or at least the most ornate places where the most work has been put into them. And they're thorough and they've stood the test of time and they've been flooded. And there's actually even been like dead bodies that have been come up when, when the levees broke, when New Orleans was flooded and everything. But to go there now, you wouldn't even be able to tell that. They've stood that test of time. Um, and the mausoleum, the work done there, it's really neat. Like there's a uh, friend of mine like even researched some of the families because they'll have like these pyramids and obelisks and sphinxes and all this weird latin writing and like they were part of these weird fraternal brotherhoods and that's a saturn thing too the 11th house in aquarius the 11th sign is about groups and fraternal brotherhoods and secret societies and, and that sort of thing so there's like this sort of like 
undercurrent of that. You know what I mean? That that you can tell that those groups sort of like built and and started New Orleans um, or founded it or something. You can tell there's a big influence on that from that. Um, if you know, uh, so, and, and you know, paying respect to the dead can be a really good remedy for Saturn as well. You know, so when we were there, we went to the funeral on a Saturday, you know, and just hung out with crows and ravens for a little while at the cemetery, and it was nice. Um, so, num uh, yeah, so point number seven is, um, Mars, that was actually kind of two points, the death, the cemetery thing, and then the fraternal brotherhood, secret society influence on New Orleans, both Saturnian things. Um, the other interesting thing is that, uh, Capricorn is where Mars is exalted at. And one thing that New Orleans is really known for is their hot sauce. And it is very hot sauce. <laughs> um, they, you know, one, one of the quickest ways to wake up your Mars is to, is to eat some hot sauce. You know what I mean? To put a lot of hot sauce in your body and it'll stimulate your adrenal system and your adrenaline and it wakes up your Mars and you're like, I need to do some, you know, what am I going to do? Let's do it. And that's, that's a major part of New Orleans culture is the hot sauce and everything. And so it's kind of interesting because, you know, Capricorn, yeah, it's like, awakening Mars, you know, and then Mars is said to be Jagrat, which is Sanskrit for wide awake in Capricorn. Mm. Um, on a health note, though, it's not really good for you to eat a lot of hot, spicy stuff, um, like cayenne pepper all the time and stuff. And if you do that, you probably have to admit to yourself that you probably don't have great digestion. Um, that can really mess up your digestion, can kill off the probiotics and the good gut health. And, um, yeah, so that's a whole other topic. And, um, you know, like, for example, most Indians that move to America suffer a lot of brain fog and, like, depression or just feel really blah in the first month that they live there. And a lot of times it's just because they're addicted to chilies and they didn't know it. And then when they came to America, they weren't eating chilies with every meal. And so they're, they're like, because they were actually using, like, a drug. You know, chilies are really so powerful. They're really like a drug. Um, like caffeine and to keep them going and Mars rules all those stimulants caffeine chilies um, You actually don't want to go overboard with those things, especially if you have a weak Mars and sadly enough That's usually the people who are addicted to those things are people who have a weak Mars and need that to get them going But if you have issues with all that, you know get a health reading from me or you know someone or whatever look into it more um, but I'm not trying to advocate the use of of cayenne pepper with every meal and you have to it's really more like a medicine like they should really just use that if they're hungover and they from their crazy new orleans lifestyle and they need to get things going you know what i mean but they shouldn't eat that regularly because it will kill off your gut health and it will make you really irritable and it will weaken your whole fire and your adrenaline and your your adrenal glands you'll get adrenal fatigue you also get that from drinking too much caffeine too much chai things like that um so it's best to use chilies in a little bit more of a medicinal way. And I know I'm going to upset some Indian f f friends that are watching that if I say it anymore, or I might have already. <laughs> um, oh, if you want to counteract that, if you want to strengthen your Mars and strengthen your fire, eat bitter greens. Eat like, um, you know, all the brassicas, you know, just go and get those spring mixes from, from the grocery store and, and just, just, throw them down your dandelion greens. Um, uh, what's that family that the dandelions are in? Um, burdocks, uh, nettles, like all those things are really good for you. All the like, all the bitter nerve tonic herbs and things. That's what you really want to want to do if you want to strengthen your Mars. Okay. Um, point number eight, Mars, when it's connected with Venus, which I'm about to go into the Venus thing, Mars connecting with Venus, one of the things that come out of that is pirates. And pirates are also something that New Orleans is just synonymous with. And that can relate to Saturn, too, because Saturn just, he's just got to do what he can to survive, you know. And pirates, like, that's what they're doing, too. You know, if they, if they were a, living a posh life as a Leo, as a king, then they know they wouldn't be out pirating, you know. Um, but they're out doing that because of probably being on the other end of the stick. 
So there's probably a Saturn influence, and then Venus is vehicles, water element, boats, sailing. Um, sailing has to do with Venus. Um, and then Mars would be the pirates, the stealing, the thievery, Mars rules thieves. So that's another big part of New Orleans culture is the pirate culture. Point number nine, Jupiter is debilitated in Capricorn. And it's just not a great place for your spirituality, for like really developing your inner life. It's all very rajasic there. It's a very colorful city. It really stimulates you. It really brings your energy out into the senses. And so if you want that, that's good. But if you don't want that, that's not that great. Um, and so it's not a great city for like spirituality or for uh, your creative destiny unfolding for you. Unless you have other things that are calling you there. Um, it's... Uh, it's just too big of a party city. It's got too much debauchery and everything like that for Jupiter to be able to function very smoothly. Um, so Jupiter goes to sleep there. And that makes a lot of sense to me from when I was there. Another thing is Jupiter is the car of children and children. It's not a good place to raise children. I'm sorry if you're watching this and you're doing it there, but you know, yeah, like you'll have to just accept that it's probably part of your karma. And you know, if you can do what you can to get out of there to get your kids to somewhere else or in the outskirts, but New Orleans as a city, no, it's not a good place to raise kids. It's just like too wild, too much partying, too much stuff going on. So that's sort of how we can see the debilitated Jupiter. Um, and it's like, as far as how much culture it is, it's not got much spiritual culture or wisdom culture. It's just about like how to live culture, like good food, you know, things like that. And that's Venus. So that brings me to point number 10 is Venus. Venus is delighted in Capricorn and does really well there. And Capricorn is where the arts really flourish, as well as good food and good culinary arts. And that's a part of Venus too. Venus rules the sign of food, Taurus, and luxuries. And they have figured that out in New Orleans. It's the French culture, which is already very Venusian and very decadent, um, but then mixing with the African kind of slave culture, and then the Spanish-Mexican kind of culture blending creates kind of the trinity of their food that um, they found, and it's delicious. And I'm a vegetarian, but there was even a lot of great cuisine for me there, which is very uncommon in the southern half of the United States. New Orleans is just not a part of the South. It is just, uh, it is just a, its own thing, you know, in terms of the whole South. You know, and if you think about Capricorn Ascendant, it's a, Venus is the Yoga Karaka or the Yoga Producer, this most strongest planet, planet that produces Raja Yoga on its own. Um, and it's in it's ruling the fifth house of creativity and the 10th house of action. So everything, the new Orleans, like everything that they act from and do as a city, they just have so much more art and beauty and creativity in it. And, you know, when you go through the city, like I said, it's so colorful. The roofs are just going to be like red, yellow, orange, like just random apartments will just have beautiful colors to them. They don't just be white houses or blank, blank, boring stuff. Every restaurant has just a unique menu, a unique style, a unique, color um the all the the walls of the restaurants have murals on them every wall has a mural painted every wall is not just a blank wall someone took that wall and said no that's my canvas and i'm doing an art piece on this and they did it the graffiti is like actually really good and really cool <laughs> and they and they've graffiti like all these really cool parts of the city and you know you can tell when it's like really professional level graffiti or just trash stuff you know what i mean um but there's just this more this richness of culture and art and sort of like a equality in a sense of, of uh, sort of like a, yeah, like a very equal sort of um, universal brotherhood type of vibe that Saturn is just all about. Um, no, there's not, there's no racism really there for being right in the South and for a lot of black people mixing and all. And I love that stuff because I have Venus and Capricorn. I grew up around black culture in the South. And so I just love all that. It's just, it was really comfortable for me. Um, and then, you know, connect African-American culture is kind of connected to Saturn, too. And um, like the, the birth of jazz, you know, the birth of jazz out of people who were like kind of suffering, impoverished, um, the black people in that area. Um, and then out of that, they were able to birth this new art form, Venus. You know what I mean? Jazz. Like, wow. Like, that's pretty profound. 
And that's one of the only things that America, no, I shouldn't say that, but that's a unique treasure. That's an, a national treasure of America is jazz, the art form that came from America. And it came from New Orleans in the Treme, the certain district of New Orleans. And you go there and there's art all over of the, of the famous musicians there, you know, uh, who started it. So there's just so much Venus there. And uh, I really appreciated that because I have my Venus in Capricorn. And um, I appreciate people who are like struggling and suffering, but trying to do something good and bring something positive into the world. And um, Saturn's just sort of got that energy. And you can really kind of just feel those, that energy. And um, so to finalize, to finalize this point, um, Louis Armstrong, I'm gonna show you the chart of Louis Armstrong, a legend, a legend of jazz and a legend of, just a legend of music in general, one of the innovators of jazz music and someone who had a very hard life and had to deal with harsh racism and no one supporting him. Like his culture did not support him in any way. So I'm gonna show his chart. All right, so you can see that from his chart right away, Saturn, Mahapurusha yoga planet. So Saturn, so we see two planets in Capricorn, the 10th house and Saturn there strong in its own sign. And that makes a Mahapurusha yoga, a great person yoga, Sanskrit Maha, great Purusha, where we get the word person from, it means person. So a great person and with, with regard to Saturnian things and connecting to that Capricorn sign. So we can see that New Orleans was probably a big part of his karma to, to work out and to act and to help innovate this art form. Um, and you know, this moon planet of musicians is on the ascendant. Um, a colleague of mine, Carmina Amza just, just did a book about um, musicians and did a lot of research on the moon. It was very significant. So here we see it again, moon popping up. You'll notice though that Jupiter is debilitated and Venus is debilitated and he was not the best uh, husband or partner to have. And he apparently uh, was a bit of a womanizer essentialist. He had like four or five wives, I think, according to Wikipedia. Um, if you just look real quick, I'm not going to go too in depth in this chart, but in the context of environments, fourth house, cancer, Lord, that's the moon. Moon is in Aries. So then Mars is the Lord of the moon and the, four, the fourth Lord. And from Mars, the fourth from Mars is Capricorn. And Mars itself has to do with property. And the fourth from there is Capricorn. And Mars is the fourth from the fourth. So we can see that definitely one of the environments he would live in would be Capricorn, but not the only one. We would also see some beach environments with that cancer influence. And he probably, you know, New Orleans is on the ocean and it's not far, you know, there is a, um, there is a beach. Uh, maybe not. There might not have been a beach there. They might have put sand in, but at some, you know, there was a beach nearby and he, and I know he traveled and he became famous. So he was going to live in different places. So um, we wouldn't expect it to all show Capricorn. And then uh, the Aries would be a little bit of an environment quality too. And that might actually relate to ghettos because Aries rules like rocky places and mountains and just like infertile areas that might've had to do with like being a black person in the ghettos and, the 1910, you know what I mean? Um, but that's a speculation, I can't say for sure. But we can see that New Orleans is really the proper environment for him to work out his karma from the Rashi, but then look at the, the Chatra Tamsha as well. So the D4 here, if you can see this chart, it's a Libra rising. And so Capricorn again becomes the fourth house in the important fourth Varga chart, the Chaturtamsha. Further, the fourth cusp lord is Venus, which is ruled by Jupiter, who's again sitting in Capricorn and is also sitting in Capricorn natal chart. And the fourth from the fourth cusp, because that's Libra, is again Capricorn. And then again, even further, the Lord of the Fourth, Saturn, is ruled by Mars, who's again sitting in Capricorn. So Capricorn really does come a lot for him, come up a lot for him as an environment. Um, and he's a legend there. They immortalized him. They put a statue in. I saw it 
it was pretty cool. Um, and then, yeah, the, I mentioned that um, the debilitated Venus. And so you wouldn't, you, you can see that with the womanizer stuff. Yeah, I took some notes on that here. Um, yep, you can see that, but also it's exalted. Venus is exalted in the Novamsha chart. So that's very important here. Let me show you that. There you go. See, it's in the Navamsha, and it's actually in the 11th from the Swamsha, coming backwards, because even sign. So it's forming an Argala, which is a Jaimini yoga that Argala means like a pin that you fasten something, so it's like fastening you to your karmas. And uh, it's, it's a strong placement for someone who's going to really do a lot with that thing, Venus being an entertainer. Um, let's see. There's one extra note. It's really fascinating. Notice how the sun rules his creativity and dharma individuality, and it's in the fifth house, strong. Sun is, in, sun is strong in the fifth there. In its own sign, 12 degrees. Uh, yeah, it's even in a good baladi of Ashtya. And notice how Saturn rules his authorities by ruling the 10th cusp in bosses, 10th house. He had rotten racist bosses and authorities. And like in general, you know what I mean? Growing up at that time, he had rotten racist people. And that's shown by the debilitated Jupiter. Jupiter is your ethics or your dharma and doing good. And they weren't doing good. And so Jupiter also rules the ninth cusp of your culture. Um, that being in the tenth too, debilitated means that the culture he was born in did not support him. You know what I mean? And was not going to support him and was going to be the, the opposite. Um, and you could, and that would have to be the case for someone who was a black man growing up, born in 1901, who had karma to become a musician and a legend. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so then, on our, when we're getting real technical with Virupas, um, the point system we use to actually measure the strength of a planetary aspect in Vedic astrology, his son only starved Saturn the authorities to one point see this uh if you look in this bottom right box aspected plants in the rossi sun going to saturn one point not able to really affect the authorities or the racist boss you know what i'm saying or the culture he couldn't change his culture but they the culture saturn starves his son to uh sorry starves his son Saturn starts to send to 45 points, 45 Arupas out of 60. You can only have 60, so it's very strong. So basically, Saturn's aspecting the sun very strong, but sun's not aspecting Saturn very strong. If you, if you think about his life, that makes a lot of sense. And if you know your sun, Saturn, and postures, there's always a lot of issues with authorities and your weaknesses and struggling. And so he had some karma, you know, from his past lives to experience that. Um, and to have to be on the other end of something, you know, so maybe he didn't do something with his, with being a good leader or whatever in the past life, he had to go back and be on the other end of it. But you can see that that was a part of him becoming great also, because that same planet Saturn is in the 10th house and is forming a Mahapurusha yoga and the planet of greatness. So his struggle of dealing with this racist culture and all the stuff was innately connected to him becoming great. And that's true because, you know, jazz and all that music came out of the suffering um, in many ways. That it, Their music and everything was like their way to escape that suffering. So Saturn actually, yeah, so this is kind of an interesting example of all the nuances of chart reading, really, and of people and what they're going to deal with. And this also is a great example of the Capricorn environment. So I hope you guys appreciate that. I hope you guys enjoy that example. All right. Thanks.